brethren, to all peace of the Lord Jesus. We're going to read the word of the Lord tonight in the New Testament, Hebrews. New Testament. Chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 9, actually not 10, chapter 9. We're going to read from verse 11, from the 11 to 14. Thus says the word of the Lord. 11 to 14 says, is here in the projection. But Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifer sprinkled the unclean sacrifice for the purification of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And we praise you. We thank you for everything that we have done for our lives. We ask, Lord, that you, that doing the word, you once again may bless your people, your church. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. My brethren, in the past, and the Lord has registered in his word many rituals so that man could purify himself. There was a purification of a woman she, when she was condemned, when she had a child, baby was the case of Mary, mother of Jesus. They purified so that they could enter into the temple. There was also a purification that was made for the man that had leprosy. And then when he had leprosy, he was healed for that infirmity. And afterwards, there was a ritual of purification so, so that he could be received once again in the livelihood with his family and society and also to enter into the temple. So every feast existed so that you could participate on them. And it was necessary also a ritual of purification. You see this in the New Testament when Jesus goes to participate in a feast of Passover and the Jews are purified so that they could participate in that feast. So in the Old Testament, when they became impure, there were a flow of blood of leprosy in order to participate on a service to enter into the sanctuary of God. The priests themselves, they needed this. They needed to wash up, to bathe. That's why there was there the purifying waters, the ritual purification through water, the ritual purification through fire, ritual purification through the blood of animals like sheep, goat, lambs, and also so there was always an instruction from the part of the Lord so that in a specific situation it would be necessary to purify so it could be established the fellowship of, of that individual with the people, with the family, with society and also with God and this was part of the understanding of the entire people, of Jewish people. So when John the Baptist he comes to prepare the way for the Lord, he also is used by God in a ritual purification, which is the baptism. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water. 
for the repentance. But the one that comes after me, he will baptize you with the uh, Holy Spirit and with the fire. I'm not even worthy of carrying his the sandal of his feet. So that was has always been in the life of the people of God, those rituals of purification. And a certain time, Jesus was with his disciples, and they began to eat without washing their hands. And when the disciples of Jesus began to eat without washing their hands, the Pharisees and Sadducees, the doctors of law, they said, look, it is wrong. How can you eat without washing your hands? You are transgressing a law. <coughs> but the law that those men, they were transgressing, was not a law of God. Not something that the, the Lord had left as a law, but was a tradition. And Jesus comes to those men and says the following, well, well, I transgress the commandment of God through the through tradition. Because in the tradition of the Jews, they had to wash their hands in order to eat. And Jesus was giving them a word. You were the ones who were transgressing, inventing laws according to your tradition, according to your religiousness. And place him upon man uh, commandment that God didn't require and he, he said something that was very interesting he says that what contaminates man is not eating without washing your hands eating without washing your hands is a matter of hygiene but that does not contaminate man what really contaminates man is not what enters through the mouth Jesus speaks about that Many times in our tradition, in our culture, in our understanding, are the things that come that contaminate us. But that's not it. That's not what comes from the outside that contaminate, or what I eat that contaminate me. Because at that time, according to the law of Moses, the animals that you could eat, the animals you cannot eat. But Jesus was speaking about something that was different than that. He was speaking about the the things of this life. He was speaking about something that was eternal. He's not speaking about the contamination of the physical body, but the contamination of the body, the soul, man's heart. So when he came, he said, what contaminates man is not what comes through the mouth, but what comes out of the mouth. That's what contaminates man. And he says, he speaks a, a little about those things, about man contaminated by the things that come out of his mouth, what proceed from his heart. And the disciples of Jesus there, at that moment, they said, wow, I don't understand. I need you to give me an explanation of what, what you just said. And then Jesus said, what comes from the heart can proceed the bad thoughts, death, adultery, robbery, false testimony, false witness, and blasphemy. Those are the things that contaminate man. But we eating without washing our hands, this does not contaminate man. So we see that men are contaminated by themselves. That's what the word says, that why man complain about himself. Man complains about his own sins. I don't need anyone else to contaminate. I contaminate myself with what is in in my heart that comes out of my mouth that's what contaminates my soul so it is interesting that there is a ritual for everything there's a ritual for purification through the water purification through the blood and also purification through the ashes of a lamb a red lamb so the water purification water blood and fire so this water blood and fire those are three ritual three means for men to purify. They were showing prophetically, pointing out to the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the perfect Holocaust, the purifier, the Savior, the one that has the power to forgive what is contaminating man. He's the one that has the power to change the feelings and the intention of man's heart. 
But the great evil that is that man has is what inside of his heart, his ideas, his feelings, his thoughts, the intention of his heart. And when we go back to the book of Hebrews, the verses that we just read, it speaks about this. But the high priest of good things to come. So Jesus, the high priest of uh, good things to come. What is it he's talking about? He's speaking about a future. The future for men. He's speaking about a future for men, a place for men, a dwelling for men. He's speaking about a, an inhabitants for men. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the great and more perfect tabernacle. Interesting that he speaks about the tabernacle because Jesus came to uh, live with us. Tabernacle see, see, speaks about living. So in my heart, if Jesus is present in my heart, if Jesus is present in my life, if Jesus is present in my heart, I am purified. If Jesus is not present in my life, if Jesus is not present in my heart, I am not purified. Why is that? Because Jesus came exactly for this purpose, to purify and to make dwelling in our hearts. We're going to come to Him and we're going to make dwelling to Him. I'm with you all days until the finish of the age. I don't know what you have, but a spiritual gift. That's exactly what it is. When the Holy Spirit comes into the life of man, man is purified. That's why many times people use, oh, uh, the blood of Jesus has power, but it's the power of the blood of Jesus in the life of the Christian, in the life of the servant, in the life of the one who truly believed that Jesus came to purify him of all his sins. And it speaks about that tabernacle that was not made out of man's hand. It was not made through works. Because we are not saved through works. Because through works we are condemned. My wage is death. A free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So my works is not going to justify me because the ones who are justified by work are condemned. That's why the word says, tabernacle not made with hands. So it doesn't come from this creation. It doesn't come from uh, us. Come came from God. And it says more. Not with the blood of goats and calves. And the Jewish people also thought that the blood of the blood of an animal could resolve their spiritual problem. No, it could resolve their problem, a relationship. It says, not with the blood of goat and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most high place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. So Jesus dies on the cross of Calvary to make concrete an eternal redemption for each one of us, or a salvation that is not going to extinguish, that has no end, but is eternal. So, for the entire eternity. Because the for the blood of bulls and goats and the ash of heifer sprinkles the unclean. So we are impure in the if we are impure in the flesh, the blood of uh, of bull and goats, the water purification would purify you purify the flesh, the body, but would not purify the spirit. The word of the Lord speaks about exactly this. But the blood of Christ, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the entire spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse our conscience? Jesus came to purify what? He came to purify the flesh. The leopard, he was purified from this flesh. The woman that had the flow of blood, she was purified of her flesh, on her flesh. The woman that was caught in adultery, she was purified in the flesh. But on the flesh alone is not enough. Because if we desire purification only in the flesh, only for this life, we are the most miserable of all creatures. So Jesus said, cleanse your conscience of the dead works. So interesting, 
you purify our conscience. What is it to cleanse your your conscience? What is for dead works? What is dead works? Dead works is the works where Jesus is not alive in us. The dead works is a work for the things of this life. So he says, you cleanse your conscience from dead works. Because the Bible says, because faith without works is dead. Salvation is by faith. Salvation is not through works. But faith without works is dead. What does that mean? It means that the true faith, the saving faith, produces in us a change of life, a changing change of our conscience. So the Bible says that whoever is in Christ is a new creature. Everything has been made new. So many times we remain in the dead work. We remain in a project that is not a project of life or that is for this life. Many times we think that we need to be purified on the flesh, that we receive the blessing of healing, deliverance, or this and that. Oh, glory to God, the, the Lord does that. But the greatest work that the Lord came to perform in our midst was to purify our conscience from those things, from those old works, from these dead works of a faith that does not generate a change in our lives. The, the songbook, the back of the, uh, the songbook says, tells a song that what I was once, I no longer I am. This is a living work, a revealed work. Why is that? Because it generated in us a change of life. And Jesus says the following, Cleanse your conscience from dead works. For what purpose? Why God wants to do this with me, with you, with each one of us, so that we, the Bible says, that works to serve the living God. So, we are aware that of the living God that He is in our lives. When we are aware of this, we have a change. But when God is not alive in our lives, there is no change. Because death does not generate change. What generates change is life. And Jesus came so that we have life and life in abundance. So the Lord speaks about this and those things. Of the purification of our conscience. And today, in the prophetic moment in which we are living, where the contamination of the mind, contamination of the heart, has guided men towards a dead work. I have Jesus, but Jesus is that in my life. I have Jesus, but is a Jesus for this life. But Jesus didn't come from this. Jesus didn't come to die on the cross of Calvary for this. But He came to die on the cross of Calvary to change our conscience our thoughts, our understanding, so that uh, our prayer, our Lord's, Father, Lord's Prayer may be present in our lives. How do you say the Lord's Prayer? Lord Father who is in heaven, blessed bless is your name, because the Lord is holy. Without sanctification, no one will see God, and this sanctification is not of the flesh, because the flesh will be left. Oh, came from dust, will go back to dust. But the Spirit is going to go back to God. But the sanctification of the Spirit my, your will be done. It's every day understanding the will of God toward our lives. And this is works. Why is it works? Because the faith that in Jesus Christ changed our lives. Jesus changed my life. I will never be the same. It's another song that we sing. But singing the song without this change of life is dead works. But singing, understanding the plan, the project of God for our lives. Because Jesus is the mediator of a New Testament. So, He came to do something new. Because the Old Testament already existed. He came to create something new. Jesus, when He came to, for my life, for our life, for our lives, He came to create something new. 
to change our lives. Because salvation is a transformation of life inside the following mediator of a New Testament so that we could receive the promise of inheritance because there is an inheritance the servant of God in the past he said my witness in heaven is my grantor in the highest he had this knowledge his mind was purified, his conscience was purified. He understood that the material goods cannot compare with the plan and the project that God had for his life. I know that my Redeemer leaves. That's why he was able to go through all those things, because he, his heart was purified of the bad conscience. That's why he was ra righteous, just, he would go astray from evil because he has understood the project of God of his life. And we understand the project of God for our lives. Our hearts is purified through the precious, precious blood of Jesus. And we have the precious blood of Jesus. What happens? We are able to come. We, we can have the boldness to enter into the sanctuary of God, like it says here in Hebrew 10, <coughs> verse 19. Yeah, there. Therefore, boldness to enter to the sanctuary of God through the precious blood of Jesus. So when man has this knowledge, purified, washed and redeemed through the blood of Jesus, he has this boldness of being able to present himself before God because he is the mediator who is Jesus through his blood of the sacrifice there on the cross of Calvary have already purified your mind, your conscience, your heart from every all your sins. <coughs> and now, evil does not come out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth is the plan, the product of God, of life for every man, for the entire humanity. And says the following, let's come with a true heart, one great certainty of faith, have the heart purified of the, the bad conscience and the body washed with the clean water. So Jesus is what? He is the Lamb of God that takes the sin out of the world through His blood and He purifies us with clean water. What is clean water? It is the Word. It's the, it's the Word of God that purifies. He also, it also purifies our, our body because there is no a healthy mind with a sick, sick body. There is no... Um, there's also there's no body, dirty body with a clean mind. So uh, um, the mind is purified. Our consciousness is clean, and the body is purified with water. So we need to have our body purified with water, which is the word of God, and the heart purified with the blood of Jesus, removing every every uh, the bad conscience. So now we have access to the presence, to the presence of God. So if we are seeking salvation in Christ Jesus, we need to every day understand the plan, the project of God for our lives and have and purify ourselves every day which, with the word, which is His word, with, with His blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary and with fire. Because John the Baptist has the fallen, I baptized with water, I will purify with water, with the word. But the one who comes after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And this is the project of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit present in our lives, most importantly, of our hearts and our mind and our conscience, so that we may never go astray from the path and take a different direction of what the Lord has projected, designed for our lives. The Lord has shown tonight in a vision, a field, in the middle of the field, there was a river of crystal clear waters, and we were all led to this river by a shepherd. And there the shepherd, he would se separate the flock, separating groups of families. Each family was separated there, and each one had access to the shore of that river so that they could drink from the river. And every day the Lord, Jesus wants to do this with us. He wants to quench our thirst 
but the thirst of his soul with his word. The psalmist in the past said, My soul thirsts for God, of the living God, when I will present before his faith, face. We're going to be presented before the face of God when the shepherd, he conduct us to his word, to this river of fresh water, of crystal clear waters. And he makes separation. What does he make separation? He, he separates to show. What is, is show the situation of each person. Whatever is my situation or my family, he has a blessing for my life. The water, which is the word of God, will cause in my life and my family an uh, effect. Is the word of God is going to cause in your family, in your, in your life, a different effect. It's going to cause an effect. It's going to cause a blessing. It's going to cause a benefit to each one of us. Whatever is the need, He's present to answer to each one of them. And He said that in the middle of the flock, a few people needed to be purified, washed, and others need to be cared for. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, He knows the situation of each one of us. And he, as a good shepherd, the good shepherd that he is, he doesn't want to condemn. He wants to save. He doesn't want to hurt. Because wounded, hurt, you already are. He wants to heal. Like the song says, there is anointing on this place to heal your wounds. So the good uh, Samaritan that wants to conduct man to the place where he can receive uh, help and be cared for. We have, we, sometimes we need a good word. He came to do all those things, to heal each one of us and to cleanse us, to purify us. In other words, to sanctify us because our God is holy. Be holy as I am holy, holy thus says the Lord. The angels from heaven, from the heaven, heavenly choir, the praise group, they continue to sing a uh, song of praise. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And the other gift the Lord was showing a youth. And this youth was is not being paying attention, is not aware on this way of conducting himself. This youth is coming close to something that is going to bring harm to his life, that is going to poison his spiritual life. And the Lord at this moment is bringing an alert to this youth. Be careful with what you're coming close to, what you're seeing that we are playing with. Because salvation is not it's not a game. Jesus didn't go to the cross of Calvary just as a game. He went there because he had a project for your life. He wanted to deliver you. That's why he's speaking with you tonight. Be careful with what you are playing with. Because there's a trap there, and he's going to bring a poison into your spiritual life. And that's not what God wants for you. The Good Shepherd has green pastures and crystal clear waters. He has a dwelling in heaven in eternity for you. The Lord also sh has shown angels visiting our homes tonight. And they visit children, intermediary, youth, adolescents. And he made a purification in our lives. Not in our homes. In our homes, we, we clean up our homes. But he came to purify the, the ones who live in our homes, our lives. He will purify and cleanse. He will straighten the hairs of a few. And others needed to take a bath. He will clean the eyes, the ears. He will clean their uh, garments the eyes, the window, the ears, to hear what does not please the Lord and does not glorify the name of the Lord. The common speaks about salvation, needs to be clean. The priest, in order to enter into the sanctuary, he needed to have these garments sprinkled with blood, and that's what Jesus is doing tonight. He's operating, visiting our lives, purifying us, sanctifying us, so that in us, every day, the good smell of the Lord may be exhaled and could be felt. Not the bad smell of sin, 
but the good smell of Christ. Amen. Let's sing a song and then soon after we're going to finish it. Uh, the service with the prayer. <coughs> Remember, peace of the Lord. The Lord has shown that He desired to give a special blessing to those brethren that heard the spiritual gift that identified with Him. And whoever wants, and we're going to do at this moment, we're going to pray with a lay of hands over you, over this brethren, this family. And, and we are here on the Zoom. Nobody needs to know how the situation is of the brother and sister in the house of anyone. You can even, if you have a, a video on, you can turn your video off. Just sound. But it's important that the Lord has shown that He wants. A imagem não está aparecendo. A imagem não está aparecendo. Your camera is off. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Very well. So the brethren heard, right? The ones who need a prayer, identified with the spiritual gifts, the Lord has a revelation that He wants to give a blessing to, to you purify the mind, soul, the mind, heart, whatever is necessary, so that we may continue in His presence. God is good. Is good. He came exactly for you and I, for the ones who sinned, who want to make a mistake, who want to have awareness that they need Him for their salvation. And that our faith may be always founded, may be a living faith. It's not a dead faith. Amen. And the true faith, uh, the faith that saved, the living sa faith, is the one that produced in us a change of life. If you need this for your life tonight, you need to change your mind, change your thoughts, 
a commitment with the Lord. You need to kneel down at this moment. Deacons are going to stand up and together with, with me are going to pray with lay of their hands. Each deacon can say a prayer. Marcus, Wayne, oh God, beloved Father, here's your people bowing before your presence, aware that it is from you that comes a victory. Here's your people, Lord, humbly bowing before you, who is the Lord of Lord, God of gods. The signs, the spiritual gift came for the joy, comfort, for the consolation and refreshing. We ask, Lord, that people may take possession of this blessing, that your grace may be poured out in abundance upon each house here represented, from the child to the elder, also for youth and adolescents, for the couples, and our homes may be homes where your spirit may find a, a dwelling to operate every blessing that is in eternity, Lord. We ask that you heal the wounds, Lord, of the hearts, the bitterness, reproach any sadness and anguish, depression, Lord. Give your people, Lord, a holy mind, a mind that is geared towards eternity, Lord. You are God of peace, and we ask that you may protect our lives, prosper our lives, our homes, helping us in the difficult moments. Take your each of one of your sins by your hands, hear the prayers in the silence of their hearts, bless your people, sustaining us, giving us the means to be prepared for the rapture of the church. We praise you for this spiritual feast that you have provided for us tonight. Glory and hallelujah we give you, Lord, because you are our God and beloved shepherd. In the name of Jesus, amen. And may I say the wonderful grace of the Lord, the Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and good and eternal Father, soon to attend the consolation of the Holy Spirit with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, my brethren. The service is over. I'd like to remind the brethren that we're going to have Sunday school that's going to be streamed from Brazil. And later on at night, at 8 o'clock, we're going to have another service of glorification to the name of our God. If the brethren want, you can open up a microphone and greet one another. You are free to do so. And to all, the peace of the Lord Jesus. Oi, Gabi! Oi, Gabi! Oi, Gabi! Oi, Gabi! Cadê Manu? Oi, Manu! Aqui! Oi, Oi Manu! Oi, 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 Manu! Oi,